I hope you enjoyed that. It is my first mantle and I'm taking full advantage to decorate it for the season, my favorite season of the year. Hello friends and welcome back to my dilapidated and potentially haunted old mansion here in Nova Scotia. It is autumn out and I am so ready to break out the cozy knits and the fuzzy sweaters and the harvest colors because I absolutely adore fall. It is my favorite season. So if you've been following along with the house videos, when I left you last week, it was September of last year and Phil and I had just finished installing the heating on the main floor before leaving the house for many months. Now, unfortunately, that meant that I missed out on a bunch of autumn content here in the house. So I am making up for that lack of fall vibes by jumping out of the current house renovation timeline and into the present moment, which I could not be more excited for. So we'll be spending the entire month of October and October only here in 2024 before dipping back into the regular timeline. Now, in order to set the context for the next month or so of videos, we need a little bit of story time because something happened that really just threw a wrench in our plans, pun fully intended, in more ways than one. So the journey from Montreal to Nova Scotia is one we've done many times at this point, and I usually don't bother to film because honestly, it mostly looks like this. And this trip seemed to be no exception. The first 10 hours or so were very uneventful, but then all of a sudden my car started to make a very strange noise. Now, you can probably see where this is going. Phil and I both heard the noise, obviously, and decided we should probably pull over and figure it out. Like, let's just double check to be safe. So we pulled over on the shoulder of the highway to investigate. Now, mind you, at this moment, the starter on my car was not working very well. So we had been leaving the car running every time we stopped to gas, which to be fair, was only twice, but this was already a known problem. We had ordered a new starter. It was waiting for me at the Nova Scotia house. So pulled over to the side of the road, left the car running, popped the hood and tried to investigate what was going on now. Keep in mind, at this point, the car had already been dubbed a lemon. We had done so much work on it since I bought it. As I've already mentioned, we had to replace the floor on the driver's side so that we weren't just Fred Flintstoning it down the road. We had changed the front brakes, the front suspension, the exhaust manifold. It had a new battery. We'd taken care of a bunch of rust on it. The starter was basically gone. And the entire time that we had owned it, it had a couple small holes in the muffler so you could hear us coming from a mile away. Then, as if that wasn't enough, last spring, the transmission died completely and I had to pay a lot of money to get it replaced. Like I said, a lemon. So we pretty quickly figure out that it's probably the transmission that's gone again. We were unable to get the car in gear. Yes, this is a manual car. We both drive stick. So we couldn't get it in gear and the wheels wouldn't even roll when we were in neutral. So we were thinking, all right, the transmission is probably shot and it might even have taken the motor with it. Who knows? So we both set to work on our phones, Googling the nearest towing places. But of course it wasn't as simple as that. First of all, we were still an hour and a half from the house. Secondly, it was 6 p.m. on Sunday evening. Everything was closed. Plus, on top of all that, we weren't even sure where we needed to be towed because we'd already replaced the transmission in this car once. We knew for a fact that there was nobody in my area here that did transmission work, at least not on a Toyota, because the last time we had to fix the transmission, we had to take it to a garage that was an hour away. So we have to decide, do we commit to changing the transmission a second time, get the car towed to the garage, leave it there, and then take a taxi an hour back to our house? Or do we just get towed car and all to our house and deal with the problem later? Was it worth it to change the transmission again? Or do I give up on the car and get a new car? They were just a lot of decisions that we had to make. And all the while, we were still having trouble finding somebody who was open, who we could get a hold of, and who would tow us an hour and a half away. And no, we didn't have CAA because of course, in the chaos of our lives, we had completely forgotten to register for it. Big regrets. Thank goodness the person we finally ended up getting hold of at the towing company happened to know the transmission place. Nova Scotia is fairly small after all. And he pointed out that their parking lot 
was absolutely tiny and he didn't think it was a good idea to just leave the car there stranded in their lot without talking to them and knowing how long it would sit there, which was a very fair point. And also, again, one of the hazards of breaking down on Sunday evening, nobody's at work. <laughs> So we had him tow us in the car directly to our house for the low, low price of $600. Actually, $635 because the icing on the cake was the $35 surcharge for the larger cab that would fit both me and Phil. So we sat in the car for an hour and a half on the shoulder of the highway, waiting for the tow truck to come. At some point, a police car pulled up, just checking in on us, making sure everything was okay. You know, we assured him that it was, we were hanging tight, and finally, the towing truck arrived. So he loaded my poor Matrix onto the truck with a bit of trouble, admittedly, because again, the front wheels weren't turning. And then we threw the Corgi in the car and sat and reflected on our luck for the hour and a half that it took us to get back home. It could have been worse. We could have broken down six hours into the 12 hour ride, but again, it also could have been a lot better. So we're gonna need to back up the car in that it, hole there. The house. Yeah, so right there. Can the car fit there? I left for two minutes to go try and find some dinner and now there's cop cars all over the place. What? What is going on? So the car broke down originally just before 5.30 and it is now 9.54, almost 10 p.m. So that means it's has been almost five hours of these shenanigans, but you know, tired and frustrated and soon to be broke, but we arrived, we're here, the house is intact. Look at Phil. <laughs> the house appears to be intact and I have um, a frozen pizza for dinner. And that's that's the plan for now. I'm gonna eat some food and go to bed and uh, catch up with you in the morning. Hopefully in a slightly better mood. <laughs> Bye. Well, we sat down and thought about it. We'd made a lot of calls. We've made a few lists. We have options. We're just still not sure what it is that we're gonna do plan of action wise regarding the car and everything. But what we do know is that we need to, regardless of what happens with the car, empty it out because we do have a couple hundred square feet of hardwood sitting in the back of the car. So we're gonna empty it out. It needs to go in this room here. However, the problem is that this room is currently a disaster. So we're just going to avoid the problem of the car and just do some good old fashioned labor, <laughs> burn off some steam that way, get the hardwood out of the car, and then maybe turn back to uh, the, the issue at hand, making some actual tough decisions. It is chaos. It's gonna become the hardwood room, honestly. Or the flooring room. Yeah, ta-da, right in this room. Okay, cool. Let's hit it. Hold that, fix them safe. Ah, are we taking them together? Yeah, that's the kind of loosey greasy and that's a line. Why? Why? Why do I have this? Why is this laying around? We'll never know. Why do we have all these weights? They were here. Okay. They were here and I figured that... Why not? If I want to... If you want to make a workout video for the tubes? Somewhere. 
Oh, that's not what I had in mind, but And then I left Phil alone with a vacuum cleaner and the camera. <laughs> Room is done, it is clean, it is beautiful, it is ready to accept some hardwood, which I think we're gonna put right there. Empty the car out. Feels good to actually be doing something productive. Let's go. Yay. Actually, first, take a look at how incredibly wild and overgrown it is out here. It is like a jungle. What is this? So this is what we have to navigate to get everything out of our car. My poor little car. Now, there's a really fun backstory to how and why we have a bunch of hardwood flooring stacked up in our car. And if you're a patron, you already know, but if you're not, just know that once we're back to the normal timeline of these videos, the story will be revealed in good time. We are becoming quite the experts at stacking hardwood flooring bundles. Take from that what you will. <laughs> so now that that's done, I think let's go take a look around the property because I actually haven't had a good chance to get like a solid look at it, but just from what I've seen in the front, things are going wild. The bees are probably loving it, but the house does look quite abandoned. Just based on the growth of the greenery around here, it's pretty intense. So let's go take a look. It's gonna be fun. Shannon makes a jungle, apparently. Turns out the wildlife had really taken over in the few months that we left with a mix of various grasses and plants and flowers, some of which were actually very lovely, but in some ways it looked even more wild than when I first bought the place. As you can see, pretty much a jungle around here. Now I would eventually love to start some planting that is very much more like eco-friendly, make the bees happy, wildflowers, natural plants, non-invasive species, that sort of situation. But I want it to be purposeful and mindful. And I think the more important thing right now is that the house doesn't look abandoned because right now it's so overgrown it really looks like nobody's living in here so i think that's kind of more an important thing at this moment in time and then later once some of the more big, bigger ticket items are taken care of we can worry about aesthetics like gardens and plants that's gonna make me happy okay well the day has somehow managed to get away from us incredibly i don't know how it is almost midday already and i feel like we've gotten nothing done but my stomach is rumbling and the fridge is completely empty and of course i don't have a car to go grocery shopping or anything so it is probably a really good thing that i had completely by coincidence actually already ordered food ahead of time to be delivered to the house now, to be clear, this is a sponsored segment, but this box that I'm holding, I purchased with 
my own money because as soon as I tried them out for my previous sponsorship, I liked it so much and I realized how incredibly practical it was going to be for us here at the house that I went ahead and signed up for their service in Canada because yes, they do operate in many parts of Canada. So I ordered this by myself. I paid for it hundred percent with my own money and I had just scheduled it to be shipped here in preparation for our arrival. And then <laughs> In the end, it ended up being a really good thing because it has absolutely saved our butt here at the house. So what draws me to Factor as a service? Well, the food, first of all, tastes good. It's incredibly fresh and having prepared meals is just so practical. It's gonna save us so much time here at the house in you know just mental energy, in shopping, in food prep, in having fewer dishes to wash from the food prep. Also, they have a great selection of meals to choose from. So highly recommend the service. I mean, obviously I am willing to pay for it myself. I've already turned my mother into a factor convert. She has been using their services too lately. So if you would also like to give it a try for yourself, I obviously genuinely really enjoy it and recommend their services. Head to factor75.com and use my code MIX50 for 50% off of your first box and 20% off of your next box. So that's code MIX50 right here at factor75.com. It's gonna get you 50% off of your first box and 20% off of your next box. So thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring another video and also for genuinely saving our butts and helping us eat in this very weird circumstance. Okay, well, quite unexpected but long overdue side quest which has to do with some uh, tree trimming because we've had this one really big tree in our backyard for, well, I mean, since we bought the thing, it's huge. Um, but I've always been a little bit concerned about one limb particular that is very clearly dead and very clearly sticking out towards our property. So if it would fall off in a heavy wind or something, there's a very good chance it would bounce towards the house and hit it. And I have had it on my mind that at some point I should bring in some arborists and get their opinion on, can we safely take down the limb? Will it damage the rest of the tree? Is the rest of the tree in good enough shape to survive? And it hasn't been like a top priority just because we've had so much other stuff going on. But just now we took a little break from our work to go walk canal and literally a block and a half away from our house was a tree trimming company with a big lift, boom lift arm cutting down someone else's tree. So we stopped and chatted and said, hey, we're like one, one block this way. When you're done here, can you come see us and give us your opinion? And they did, they came out just now. Well, first neighbor Mike came out and gave us his opinion. We walked around and looked at it for quite a while through the stick for canal, good times. And then they came out and they said, yeah, we can take that down for you, easy. And uh, it's only gonna be $160, which honestly, I was expecting it to be way more than that. Phil and I obviously could probably do this ourselves. Like we had considered it. It's just that with the hill, and the fact that this is a very big limb that is, like I said, like really coming towards our house. So there was a good chance we felt that the, the limb as we cut it might hit the ground and bounce right into our house. Like I said, we could manage it, but for 160 bucks, we're gonna let the professionals manage it. So they're here right now. They're getting ready to uh, set everything up to cut it out. So let's go take a look. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like so much fun. This is what we need to do the siding. Such a fun toy. So I know I didn't have great before shots of the tree, but you can see by looking at the wood that they cut off that that limb was really, really dead. And honestly, if it wasn't threatening to fall towards our house, I would have considered leaving it there just for the wildlife to live in it. But I'm also kind of glad it's gone. Super not like it was just super dead. It was ready yeah, to come down. Just With the dead limb significantly shorter and no longer threatening to fall into our house, hooray, he was then able to cut down the rest of the limb from the ground. <laughs> Uh, 
We told him he didn't have to chop it up into smaller pieces, but he insisted and his chinsa is much better quality than ours, so we let him. But don't worry, we will be keeping the wood on our property. Well, the treat's now about a thousand pounds lighter. One heck of a haircut. And we've got all the weed whacker cable from Ronnie. So we are getting ready to go. We are, it's been a slow start to the day, but we're we've getting moving. Slow, but we've done a lot. Well, Phil's inside messing around with the weed whacker, getting the cable all threaded. I think I'm gonna start out here with these guys and uh, start pulling them out by hand because neighbor Mike said that they are pretty easy to pull out by hand. So since we only have one weed whacker at the moment, might as well make myself useful. You gonna make yourself useful? No, not at all. So as promised, they are coming out quite easily. I don't know what they are. Mike called them the devil's rhubarb, which I absolutely love, but yeah. Oh, neighbors walking by, please don't stare at me. <laughs> but yeah, they are coming up pretty easily. So I'm just gonna go around and get uh, everything around the foundation of our house so that it looks slightly less abandoned. And uh, at some point you're gonna hear the dulcet tones of the weed whacker and that's probably gonna be Phil. Turns out he pretty quickly abandoned the microplastic machine in favor of the electric lawnmower. Look at how gnarly these things are. They're like, they're huge. I wish this would be edible. Like they look like they would make nice salad. I wouldn't. Well, actually, it tastes a bit like um, cucumber. I Pretty still, good. I still don't know that I need it. Canal's coming to save you. Not sure what's up with these. Like, I, why do they like to grow so much against the foundation of my house? Like, I don't understand. It's kind of the only place they really want to be hanging out right alongside the side of my house. The good news is the root system seems to be like very small and localized. This is not something that is doing damage to the foundation of my house. Can you imagine <laughs> none of the trees managed to get in but these stupid weeds did? That would be wild. But no, we seem safe. Oh no! Look what happened to my poor microphone. I got in a battle with a pick pick and it lost. Oh, that's a good shot. Look at that doggo. Look at that good doggo. Huh. This is my life right here. Dog. YouTube. Weeds. Turns out my microphone wasn't the only casualty either. Oh. Ew! <laughs> it's part of it, but you know, there's a million more hooks. That's funny. Yeah, funny. How, <laughs> How did it get? I have no idea. Uh, actually, no, I have a small idea. There's a big old pick pick bush in the back by the back kitchen door. Hello friends, uh, popping in for a little surprise visit. Uh, apologies about the less than optimal lighting. This was very much not a planned thing. I was literally just sitting here editing a video for you all and I opened up my coffee page to download the list of monthly supporters, you know, for the patron scroll that is in every 
video and when I opened up the website I got this fun little notification and there was confetti and it was very exciting and it said congratulations you have achieved your goal and so I wanted to come in and say thank you to all of you because it was you the viewers who contributed to help me get this goal so I now have reached the three thousand dollars for my trailer which is very very exciting now obviously the whole lack of a car, broken down, needing to get a new car. Situation has put a bit of a hitch in the plans, bun fully intended. So the timeline for like when I'm gonna be able to get a trailer, not entirely sure on that yet, but don't worry, I will not be taking money from the trailer fund to get a new car that is reserved to get a trailer. It's just like, if I don't find one for 3,000 and I have to pitch in a little bit of my own money to make up the difference, then it'll probably have to wait a little bit because I will have just had to buy a new car. But either way, just wanted to say thank you so, so much. Very, very exciting, very fortuitous, and just wanted to say a giant thank you to everybody. Not only those who donated to the fund, obviously a massive thank you if you are a monthly supporter or if you just did a one-time coffee thing, but also a genuine thank you to everybody who is watching these videos and enjoying the adventure and, you know, leaving a thumbs up and a like and, you know, commenting for the algorithm, all that sort of fun stuff. So thank you so, so much. And and when you see the trailer pop up for the first time on this channel, you can give a large holler and know that it is largely thanks to you. All right, friends, car talk time. Also for the record, a great show by NPR. But basically Phil and I have been talking a little bit yesterday and a little bit this morning about what exactly we wanna do about our car situation, my car, and we are leaning towards getting a new car. I mean, not a new, new car, a new to me used car, because I am still on a tight budget, but it just felt like it was too risky to dump another couple, few thousand dollars on trying to find another transmission, getting it down here, getting the car towed to the garage, paying them to change it out. It was just, it felt too risky considering the car is 18 years old at this point and a certified dud. And we've just, we've sunk so much money into it at this point, but I think it's time to just give up on it and get a slightly newer car. And we'll probably also be trying to do that in Montreal just because the selection of vehicles is infinitely larger. Therefore, the prices are also significantly better, but we don't have to decide on any of that immediately. We can still ruminate for another 24 hours or so. And in the meantime, we are going to go back and do some more yard work. One, because we are stuck on the property here <laughs> and uh, can't run out to go get any tools or supplies. And also because there are a couple plants left that are very significantly entrenched in the ground, mainly around the front deck area out there. So we are gonna try and root those all out. And then while we're in the front, we're also going to probably try and repair that seating area out on the front porch because we do actually have all the raw materials to do that. We bought a lot of wood for that last fall and then ended up just not having the time to replace it. So we do still have most of that wood laying around here. It, some of it got used elsewhere in the house, but I think we have enough to replace one half of the seating area and that's fine because I'm the only person who uses it and I can only sit on one half of the porch as it is. So I think that's what we're going to do today after I finish my coffee. I'm ready for my coffee. And that's all that we really had time for. The next day I drove Phil to the airport where he flew back to Montreal to start looking for a new car. Now, to be clear, he was already planning on going back to Montreal after he helped me drive down and open up the house because he still has some stuff to take care of there. But now he has the additional task of searching for a replacement car. We are aiming to stick with the same model, a Toyota Matrix or potentially a Pontiac Vibe because they are the same car because they're a fairly compact car that gets good gas mileage. It has an amazing capacity to fit stuff in the cab, as you will know, having seen me do it many times. And with an engine that is rated to tow, which is important because we are trying eventually to get a trailer with a lot of help from you. Thank you if you have donated so far. So cross your fingers that by the end of this month, we'll have something sorted out that I won't be stranded here for an entire month alone. But in the meantime, I am stuck here at the house by myself without a car, which 
just means it's gonna be time to dive into all the wonders that this house has to offer. So first up, sorting out the attic and using what I find and what I have laying around here to make a new working space, a new office. But of course, you already knew that if you saw last week's second channel video because we obviously don't have a car to just go get more fill, more thread, uh, fill. more cable. More of me, need more of me. No, we have we have enough of you, more than enough. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Phil be whipping. 